So in this video, we're going to talk about the differential ring oscillator. And when you, we talked about in the last video, just the simple ring oscillator, which was just a set of three inverters cascaded together and then connected back to each other. And this formed basically an infinite chain, chain of inverters that led to an oscillation with period uh, with period 6t not or 6tp, where tp is the propagation time. Now, I said in the last video that if we had a differential inverter or something that takes a differential input and produces an inverted differential output, so say we have an, an input that looks like this. On the plus side, we've got, we start out with zero and we end at VDD. On the minus side, we start at VDD, end at zero. Then at the output, we're going to produce a waveform that is its invert, or it's the, the original segment just inverted. So it starts out low and then goes high. The positive output starts out low and then goes high, or sorry, negative output starts out high and then goes low. Um, so this is this is our differential inverter. And if we want to draw the signals in relative to each other, what they look like, they would look like this. So like so. And this is our propagation time TP. And I've drawn these signals as more square rather than the, uh, rather than the more smoothed signals, just for clarity. Uh, for clarity's sake. So in, in reality, they are going to be more, more smoothed. So then if we connect another differential inverter here, um, so let's say this is plus and minus again, minus and plus. And you notice that the minus and plus are flipped uh, with respect to each other just so that I can conveniently cascade, um, cascade things like this. So it's going to do the same exact thing as the previous inverter did. It's going to start out low and then go high. On the negative output node, it's going to start out high and then go low on the positive output node. So if we draw this on our original chart, it's going to look like that and that. Now, the interesting thing is we know that our output um, our initial or our initial input is still high, right? So it's it's positive input is high and its negative input is low because that's what it changed to at the very beginning. But we actually have signals that could cause that to change. So instead of just cascading this like we would with uh, with just the regular inverter, again plus to minus and plus to minus, if we don't do that, uh, and we say that, well, I want to go, so this signal is currently low, so I want a signal that goes from low to high. Well, we can get that from this guy, because this guy goes from low to high. So if we connect this output to the inverting input here, and this output to the non-inverting input here, so we've connected the non-inverting output to the non-inverting input, and the inverting output to the inverting input, which is the opposite of what we did previously. If we connect it like that, then our circuit will oscillate. And uh, let me just redraw this below so it's less messy. We've got our differential ring oscillators like this, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. They're connected like this. So plus minus is connected to plus, plus is connected to minus, but here it's the opposite. And we can redraw this in a more standard and kind of more pretty way um, by saying that, well, the output is crossed. So this demonstrates that, well, the output is not what, it's not connected in the way that we would expect. It's flipped instead. So we managed to generate a signal that causes the thing to invert. So initially, if this goes high, this goes low, this goes high, and that means that this goes high. And if we track the other, the other end simultaneously, initially this went low, which meant this went high, 
this went low, and so this went low. And so we've switched from initially being high to being low, and that's the condition for an oscillator. And so the propagation or the, the total period of this guy is just four times the total propagation delay because we've only got two inverters here. So this can provide some speed advantages over the three inverter ring oscillator. But how do we actually make one of these? Um, well, the simplest way to do it is just with a, diff a basic differential amplifier. So we've got our two resistors up top. We've got our two input transistors. We've got some current source that biases the whole thing, ISS. We've got an input. So this is VN plus, this is VN minus. And if we apply a positive uh, signal to this transistor, it's inverted at this node. So this is V out minus, and this is V out plus. And so if we draw, if we try and draw a one-to-one -one correspondence with our initial amplifier, our initial differential amplifier, this would be Vn plus, this would be Vn minus, this would be V out minus, and this would be V out plus. And if we cascade these, then we can get our differential ring oscillator. And so that's how that's how the thing works. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually replace those resistors up top with transistors. So we could replace them with, say, diode connected PMOS transistors, like so. And then we'd have an all transistor uh, differential oscillator. And that's awesome uh, because we know that transistors in integrated circuits are easy to make. They're extremely cheap. Uh, we know that current sources can be, or that transistors can be used to make current sources. And so this circuit doesn't require any resistors. It doesn't require uh, any in additional introduced capacitors. It's just, and this is uh, V out minus. And so this is our differential oscillator. And you can use either one, uh, but typically you'd, in, you'd, use, you'd try to use as many transistors as possible if you don't need to tightly control um, the resistance here. So either one of these will work. They're both differential amplifiers, so you just have to connect them properly.